Hey, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today we've got a live Enhanced Campaigns migration for you. Uh, this is hosted by Hannafin Marketing and uh, presented by Carrie Albright and Eric Couch. So to give you a quick introduction because we're going to be a little pressed for time today. Uh, Carrie? Hey there everybody. I'm Carrie and uh, I'm happy to be here on my very first webinar with PPC Hero. So I'm excited to tell you all about what we've learned from Enhanced Campaigns and walk you through a new migration. Uh, I've been here with Hannafin since last summer, and I'm vlogging on PPC Hero, and if you love the sounds of my voice, you can actually check out the video blog I posted this morning um, about the new Keyword Planner tool. So it's another opportunity to hear me talk about what I know about PPC. And sitting next to me is Mr. Eric The Voice Couch. Oh, I don't know <laughs> where this came from. So yeah, my name is Eric Couch. I am also an account manager here at Hannafin Marketing and a blogger at PPC Hero. I've been here about... Uh, it's been about a year and a couple months ish, uh, but yeah. So we've been diving right into doing uh, our enhanced campaigns transitions. So hopefully today we can show you uh, some of the different methods that we put into place for doing these migrations. Because there are a few different options you have, but also a few things that you need to keep in mind before you do these migrations in terms of uh, calculating and math and Excel functions <laughs> and other kinds of feature sets that uh, you can make use of in your own migrations. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will learn something. Mm -hmm. So as we mentioned, today's topic is an enhanced campaigns live migration. So you're gonna get an in-depth look at the migration process and be able to prepare yourself for the mandatory July transition. Now that used to be a uh, mandatory June transition, but uh, obviously, Things have slipped back a little bit then on Google's part, so we have a little bit more time, but hopefully in that extra space, you'll be able to um, make use of some of the things that we talked about today. Mm -hmm. And I like to think that Google really saw this transition coming and said, okay, we're gonna put some more tools, some more features before the deadline to transition to, to the enhanced campaign status. So maybe they push it back a little bit more and then gave us some more stuff to use to help us make progress. All right, so if you'd like to join in on the conversation, be sure to include the hashtag ThinkPPC in all of your Twitter tweets. Otherwise, you can also use the webinar question box to send us any questions that you may have. All right, so I guess <laughs> uh, we're gonna start doing the live migration process. So today we're joined by Melissa from iBuyHouses.com. Uh, she's graciously kind of agreed to let us use her account as sort of a, uh, <laughs> Uh, canary in the coal mine, well, not necessarily that <laughs> metaphor, but uh, as sort of a trial run to do these live migrations. So, uh, hey, Melissa, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> great, and we're glad to have you. And just wanted to thank you again for kind of allowing us to uh, use your account in this process. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Melissa, I was kind of wondering, we're, we've seen that you've done a little bit of work working on um, transitioning to the enhanced campaign status. So have you felt a little apprehensive about going through this process? And if so, what's kind of caused you to, to um, take the, the steps that you have? I think it's the fear that I'm going to end up spending more money than I need to. Well, that That's makes, probably everybody's fear, too. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And that's something we'll definitely talk about a little bit of how you can sort of control some of that and also what you might want to anticipate when going into it. Yeah. All right, so in terms of your experience with enhanced campaigns thus far, so I know you've had a few campaigns that have already been migrated over, like only like a handful, maybe one or two. So um, have you done much experimentation with those, or has it just been something you've been kind of approaching with a lot of trepidation, as, uh, as you said, because you're scared of uh, spending too much money? I, I kind of just wanted to dive right into them, but I haven't done any actual changes. When I create new campaigns, they're created as enhanced campaigns, and I haven't seen any negative impact as having them as enhanced campaigns, so I just haven't changed anything. That, that sounds like what a lot of people probably do is sort of set it up and, and watch it for a little while and see if there are any big major flags that come up of, of what they need to tweak, but you know, just, just waiting to see what you can uh, sort of jump into. Yeah, all right. So then I guess um, without any further ado, uh, bear with us here as we leave the safe confines of PowerPoint and go into the wild. So we are here in uh, live in Melissa's account that she's uh, graciously provided us access to. So yeah, you can see we have about five, actually five or six campaigns that have already been enhanced. So I guess the best way to get started is to just talk about some of the different methods that we have 
at our fingertips to actually go through the enhanced campaign migration process. So Carrie, which ones do you have the most familiarity with so far? Well, really when I went to do uh, this migration, I used a lot of the AdWords editor. I felt like that was most helpful in what I need to do as far as um, being able to make sure I was seeing all of my campaigns, and copying them appropriately, whether it was because of my mobile preferred ads or just various settings. I felt like that was the best way for me to approach it. Um, I also had a blog post about the Upgrade Center, which is something that Google's rolled out to really help those who are doing their the PPC that maybe they're not entirely certain of how to go through the uh, enhanced process. It really sort of gives you um, some suggestions on where to start, what to upgrade, and what to merge so that when you're actually going into enhanced campaigns, you feel like you've got someone sort of holding your hand through the process. Okay. So how... Um... <laughs> How useful has the Upgrade Center really been? Because when I did my own kind of transitions, the Upgrade Center wasn't actually available. <laughs> so has it been kind of a boon, or has it been useful at all in making that transition, or has it just been kind of um, just an easy way to automate the process? Well, it, it is an easy way to automate the process. If you've, got, um, for, if you've got a lot of campaigns that are all device campaigns, it really just sort of, like I said, sort of holds your hands through the process. But if you do uh, what a lot of PPC managers have done in the past, which is segment by device, having a mobile campaign and then sort of a duplicate uh, desktop campaign. When you go to merge those two, this uh, uh, campaign upgrade center really, really starts making those suggestions of what it is that you can line up and what you can merge together. And it sort of helps to make sure that you're not accidentally leaving out uh, keywords, ad groups, ads, and sort of walks you through the, the, the process behind the whole thing. Right. So when you do this upgrade, um, since I, have, I haven't actually used this, is it a sing do you pick a singular campaign or, or does it do like multiple campaigns all at once or as many as you want? Yes, both of them actually. <laughs> it, uh, it, it allows you to do things in sort of a blanket motion. It lets you just choose specific campaigns that you want to upgrade themselves. And there's a the time to go in and actually make those adjustments. The, mobile bid settings and things like that. It has suggestions for what you might want to do, but you can, of course, also go in and just write your own rules. So as we go through and identify how to do things like mobile bid adjustments, people can kind of take what they're learning from you and the spreadsheet that they're going to see and and identify if the Upgrade Center is really what the way that they want to go about doing it, but maybe even some of those numbers okay. they come up with. So Eric, you said that you're sort of the pioneer of the enhanced campaign track here at, at Hannafin. I know that when this, they first came out, you really charged in and yeah. jumped on your accounts, converted what you could, and, and really um, sort of led the way for all this. How's that experience for you? So it's been, um, like, it was actually kind of sort of serendipitous when I had the opportunity to upgrade because it solved some issues that I actually uh, was running into just in terms of, like, launching on mobile. Because a lot of the accounts that I was working in, um, like, I'm, I've always been kind of a stickler in being one to follow best practices, so um, having to be faced with the prospect of, like, a merged mobile and desktop campaign prior to enhanced campaigns was kind of uh, terrifying. But then um, learning that that was going to be kind of the new best practices kind of made it uh, kind of all worthwhile to kind of do it for me. But that was a very specific case, so it's not necessarily going to be the same for you. So, Melissa, when you made that transition, so it's always just been um, newly created campaigns that have been opted into Enhanced. Is that correct? Yeah, I haven't really <laughs> tried to mer or migrate any of them yet. Okay, well then I guess we're going to get really started here. So um, the way that I always did it, um, and this is going to be a notification that you are all very familiar with now, is just um, the first the first way that they made available to us, which is just going into any of the online campaigns and just seeing this very um, noticeable notification here saying that this campaign will be upgraded to an enhanced campaign in a few months, or you can just upgrade right now. So. Yeah, the easiest way to do that is just to get started. <laughs> so I guess we'll do that here. Since you guys are here for a live Enhanced Campaigns migration, um, we'll get started. So you have the option, as soon as you click on that very large blue button, um, to get started with the AdWords Enhanced Campaigns. So it gives you a little bit of a pitch here, saying it gives you more powerful bidding, smarter ads, and all that. Um, and then you get the option to start now or do it later. So we'll start now. Gary, you said a gas. This is so exciting, you guys. I can't wait to see what we, uh, what we stumble across here. <laughs> so in this case, um, you can adjust your bids for mobile. So as soon as you enhance the campaign, um, you have the option to either increase it by, so some of these pre-selected 
uh, mobile bid adjustments. So you can increase by $50, 50%, 25%. You can set it at the same bid as desktop and tablet. Let me just say flat out to start with, you don't want to do any of those top three things. <laughs> that would be a very bad idea. Uh, if you need more reasons why, you could just read um, Jeff Allen's stellar article on enhanced campaigns on tpchero.com. He put it out yesterday as soon as I saw the title, which is, um, like things we've learned from $1 million spent on enhanced campaigns, I knew that was going to be fantastic, <laughs> and it is. So you should take a look at that. He's got a lot of really great statistics about what enhanced campaigns has meant to a lot of our accounts. Um, so the options we have here are, yeah, increase by 50, increase by 25, set it to the same bid, or what you start doing is decreasing by 20% or by 25% or 50%. And you also have the option to use a custom bid adjustment. So you can increase by up to 300% or decrease all the way down to 100%, meaning that you'll be out of mobile advertising entirely. So I think just in terms of, for simplicity's sake, we'll go with just a decrease by 50%. So this implies a reduction of 50% to all bids, um, all current like desktop bids for your mobile bids. And in this case, the projected impact is really nothing. So that's um, in, this, in terms of making sure that Melissa doesn't spend any extra money, uh, this is probably the best way to go in terms of just this blanket adjustment. Would you suggest that for people who never seen a lot of mobile traffic to their to their websites that if they're just jumping in and they're not exactly sure where to set it start at that that negative 50 percent yeah um if you still have like an interest in advertising on mobile but don't necessarily have the data to back it up or um, the performance to back it up um, we'll show you kind of how to adjust your mobile bid uh, mobile bid modifier uh, in a little bit based on performance but if you don't really have that kind of foundation to work with going into it, yeah, I think 50% is probably a pretty a pretty strong modifier to go with. Um, or you can always just, as I said, use a custom bid adjustment to increase or decrease by uh, whichever percentage you want to use, whether it's 99 or just 1%, even though that, that wouldn't really do anything. But, so that, that was just kind of a bad joke on our part. <laughs> Now what you folks missed was the twinkle in Eric's eye when he said calculating your mobile bid adjustment because he's got quite the uh, spreadsheet presentation coming along. Oh, so don't, don't. Spoilers, spoilers, <laughs> Harry, spoilers. So yeah, so this is what we're here for is we're going to complete this upgrade. So this particular campaign, one second. Oh, it's now enhanced. Magical, magical stuff. Can you just see, you can see like the shimmer now. It's, <laughs> it's just shining, this campaign, is just, it's so enhanced. See, I think that's the next thing that Google should should roll out is once you've moved to enhance to actually all the settings kind of twinkle just a little bit, yeah. really just give you that little something extra. And you couldn't hear it because this was actually muted, like the computer's muted, but played a little fanfare. Uh, <laughs> that's what you all have to look forward to. Yeah, it didn't actually do that, but <laughs> it should. It did in my head. Yeah. It was great. So that's just the regular sort of enhanced process, and it's really painless. Like for all the for all the impact this is actually going to have on the PPC world, it's kind of crazy how simple it is mm -hmm. to actually do this migration. It's mostly in most cases, it's just a single click. Yeah, and it sounds like Melissa. It sounds like that was kind of your experience too. Is that you were creating these new campaigns, and you just start a new campaign. You'd say, okay, you want to do enhance, right? And you'd say, yeah, and it could be just as easy as that. And you could go in if you wanted and set those different adjustments, but really the, the process itself is really simple. Yeah, as there's more calculations on the back end mm -hmm. that you have to be concerned with and more sort of features and strategies that you want to put in place, which we'll get to here in just a little bit. So that was doing an upgrade via the AdWords interface. So we're going to get recent changes here, so we'll see that this is now an enhanced campaign in the AdWords editor, and then we'll show you the AdWords editor itself. So yeah. That campaign that we just moved to Enhanced is now displayed as such. Um, enhanced Campaigns is enabled in the interface here. But the other way you can do this is also in the, enhanced, uh, in the AdWords interface right down here for the Edit Selected Campaigns. It's in the Campaigns tab. Um, you can just select any of these so you can find. So Enhanced Campaign Disabled will find just one of these active campaigns. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll choose one of the geo-targeted to Florida. Um, and you can do the same thing here. It's just a simple matter of going enable and then setting your mobile bid adjustment in this case to um, Yeah, just another 50% Well in this case though, it has to be uh, it's a little bit different from the AdWords interface It doesn't give you the option to uh, Increase or decrease by so you have to have in this case 
um, to make that negative 50 mobile bid adjustment be negative 50, because otherwise that would have increased by 50%. And uh, Melissa, <laughs> I could, I could, uh, I didn't hear her screaming, but I can imagine she wanted to. <laughs> yeah, but does that make sense so far for you, Melissa? Yeah, it does. It seems really easy. All right. Yeah, great. <laughs> I'm glad that this part is easy because the rest of it's going to get a little bit crazier. So we'll kind of um, talk about all of that as we get to it. Um, so in this case, all it is is just um, I'm always one who checks the selected changes before I do anything. I think that's a great idea, Eric. It is, and that's a best practice that you should follow. Hey, I love it. Fantastic. <laughs> so just check those changes, and yeah, it's super simple. So you can see the change here where the enhanced campaigns is enabled with a mobile bid adjustment of minus 50%. Um, so what you want to keep in mind is that when you start working with the AdWords editor, editor to upload these bid adjustments is that the formatting is the exact same way that you would enter it into this box. So it's either like a minus 50, no percent on the end of that. So it's minus 50 or just a regular, like a positive value of just a 50 in this case. If you wanted to increase it by 50%, you just put 50 in the Excel box. So I'll kind of show you that in a little bit, but that's something to keep in mind because as some of the more advanced accounts and account managers out there start doing these changes and <laughs> doing like modifications to your modifiers based on performances, based on account performance, um, it gets to be a little bit difficult to format this stuff. I think that actually it's it's funny that you really point out that in the editor you do need to say negative twenty percent or negative fifty percent, and then in the interface you just say regular I want fifty percent of what the other guy's bid is. And I think that's something that when this first came out, that was something that there was actually some confusion on because it is it is different that way. You want to be very intentional behind if you're putting in a positive number or a negative yeah. number. So I think that's really good that you brought that up. Oh, and it's actually it gets even crazier than that because Google has um, they. They actually have three different way, ways of reporting how these bid adjustments are put in place. So they have this in the editor where it's just a minus 50% or up to like 100, 300 or however it is, but in that form, so without the percentage. In the interface, when you select the modifier, it can be increase by or decrease by, mm -hmm. so no negatives or anything there, it's just that increase or decrease stuff. And then when you actually, and we'll show you this, when you download a report from the settings tab talking about these mobile bid adjustments, the scale is not in that, in that way. It actually goes from, um, so it starts with like a one and then it goes like 1.25 is an increase of like 25%. Mm -hmm. So it's incredibly confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually have to add a few more calculations on top of that to make it play nicely with the editor um, because you can't just do as you would with like big changes you can't just download it and say like I want to add a little bit here and there you have to do some more calculations on top of that because the formatting is not kept the same and it's infuriating <laughs> well we appreciate you going through and making it a little a little more uh, idiot proof for people people like us going through believe that. me I'm the last person you want to talk to about making things idiot proof. <laughs> But, so in this case, I'm just kind of showing you the editor upgrade, upgrade process. You can just post these um, selected campaigns, uh, all campaigns. And now we have a second campaign that's also been upgraded to enhance campaigns with that same kind of just flat mobile bid modifier. So that's how you do that via the editor. And if you wanted to, you can just sort by the campaigns that are all enabled, or in this case, um, disabled. And you can also sort of filter by eligible versus paused but just simply modify all those that are disabled and do that same kind of blanket change to enabled, um, even though you may not want to do that. It's probably good to do on a case-by-case -case basis, I mean, depending on the amount of campaigns you have, but um, it's just that easy to do in the editor. Again, it's just a simple click and that mobile bid adjustment. Sounds good. Eric, do you, would you suggest if somebody's got campaigns that they, for the most part, keep paused or maybe decided to pause a while back, that they go ahead and do the the migration to enhanced status? Uh, I would say yes, just because um, it's going to get upgraded anyway. It's going to be an automatic <laughs> transition. So if you have any intent on possibly unpausing some of those campaigns, I mean, not the mobile campaigns, you probably want to end up um, getting rid of those after the transition date. I mean, you'll, you'll want the data beforehand, so don't delete them just yet, but you'll want to still have that data on hand for mobile performance. 
Sounds good. And that's one of the things that the Upgrade Center does is when they're helping you merge, they actually say, do you want to hang on to this, this campaign and just keep it paused, even though you've merged it into something new? Or do you want us to go ahead and delete it? So Yeah. So speaking of which, um, we promised a, a third way of doing this. So we'll actually show you how the Upgrade Center works. Okay. So in this case, um, it's now, it should be available to most accounts, but it's over there on the left-hand side of the AdWords interface, down beneath like the account tree, um, beneath bulk operations and the reports and uploads. So you just click on the Upgrade Center and get started. Um, so you have, it gives you kind of a rundown of all the campaigns that you still have awaiting um, the conversion process. So you can do pending upgrades, you can merge campaigns, or just use the advanced mode. Um, so you kind of view this, um, and this is where you would select the campaigns. Mm -hmm. and in this case, um, it's kind of similar to the editor. We can just select those that are still pending and filter by paused versus which ones are active. But in this case, um, we'll select Idaho and we can kind of choose the upgrade settings. So you can use the Google suggested default calculator for each campaign, which uh, again, you're placing a lot of faith in Google. Um, in this case, we'll, we'll go with the same sort of decrease by 50%. We can upgrade this one legacy campaign to enhanced campaigns and it's it's pretty much the same interface. It doesn't give you the same click and cost information that you get from the campaign interface that we saw earlier, but it's, uh, it gives you that same option. And you can also save for review and upload or, and make that change later. Um, so in this case, we're saving it for review. Um, it tells you that it's upgrade ready and then you can just complete that upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, so you have the option as you make that to either switch or do it now or, or do it later. In that case, so now that's also enhanced with that negative 50% bid modifier. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of the three different ways you can do it. You can play around with some of these settings, but that's really the gist of upgrading to enhanced campaigns. Um, so all in all, it's a painless process to actually do it. The pain comes later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that that's what's going to be really helpful today is kind of going through some of those new features or those new settings that people can actually jump into and say, okay, I've, I'm in enhanced. I got through that. Now what do I do with this new stuff? So that's what we're going to jump into next. Yeah, so the first thing we're going to talk about is probably the biggest uh, impact is the mobile bid modifier. So there are a few different ways you have to calculate this. Um, now, this has just been released, and ironically, um, as we were preparing for this today, I got an update to the AdWords editor letting us know that the ability to upload uh, mobile bid adjustments at the ad group level is now available to do via the editor. So if you haven't um, gotten the opportunity to upgrade your AdWords editor yet, it's coming. It just happened to us literally one hour ago. Um, but that is uh, one of the options that you have. You can either, um, based on kind of the amount of data you have, you can set mobile bid adjustments at the ad group level now or continue to do it at the campaign level. Mm -hmm. So Eric, so what's an example where somebody might want to change their mobile bid adjustment for an ad group level versus a campaign level? Yeah, so um, as you both know, like it's, yeah. well, as you know, it can be very, you get very wildly different statistics based on like the intent and the segmentation of the ad groups within a campaign. Oops. Like that. Um, so there's a lot of value in calculating that, especially as you get like bigger and more complex accounts to making sure that you're as specific as possible with your mobile bid adjustment. So I know you probably, um, I haven't had as many in some of my accounts to do ad group level adjustments, mostly because they weren't available when I made that transition, but I know you have some experience with that. Yeah, yeah, I think that um, what you're saying about sort of how you might segment your ad groups really does uh, have some indication as to how it might be affected by mobile, mm -hmm. um, mobile traffic. So if there's a certain uh, series of keywords that are gonna be sought out that would be more likely to be uh, sought out by a mobile device, yeah. that good old Google pizza example of- Hashtag got, pizza, <laughs> it, it lives, it continues to live. It, it's gone but not forgotten. Um, but if you've got it segmented out, that that's actually going to be grabbing more of that mobile traffic because of um, where that user is in their buying cycle, things like that, you really may see the data behind that saying, this is going to be an area that you want to really um, be able to build that mobile traffic. Yeah, or maybe you have some ad groups that are um, focused on shorter or branded terms mm -hmm. that are more easily typed in mobile devices and that you may be, there may be merit into like adjusting those bid modifiers a little. Okay, so to kind of show you how we've gone about creating our own mobile bid uh, modifiers, um, you want to make sure, and we'll kind of do this as sort of an easy example. Um, we'll do it at the campaign level because otherwise we'll be doing it for like hundreds of ad groups 
Um, <laughs> so for the ease of kind of showing you guys what we do, um, we'll do it for at the campaign level for now. But the same calculation goes for the bid adjustment at the aggregate level. You're going to want to make sure you get a large enough snapshot uh, for this data so it can be um, last 30 days if you have the traffic for it to get kind of the most relevant recent data or you can go 90 days I mean, really, any amount of time. It can be all time if you really want to, but um, the competitive landscape of PPC changes so quickly, you're probably going to want to make it be around 90 days or so. What would you recommend, Carrie? Um, I would say I would say definitely something around 90 days or so, just because especially with the option to transition into enhanced campaigns, uh, it's you're going to want to be able to identify what your device traffic's been in the recent history, but uh, in a long enough period that you can actually get enough data. Okay, so in that case, um, I'm, my calculation's a little bit off here about what actually 90 days is, but for this for this purpose, we'll go from February 22nd to May 22nd, because okay. AdWords does not have a last 90 days option, and I am incapable of doing that without Excel. So um, in this case, all you need to do is just set your date range for the last 90 days, and what you're going to want to do in this case for campaign level adjustments um, is download a report which segments out by device statistics. So it's just hitting the download button, hitting the segment and device, and then creating that campaign report. Now I do want to say that before we got into this process, uh, Eric did use the word easy twice as we were entering into it. So remember that you can go back and rewatch this, and you can obviously and blame me for when it is not easy because it's a lot of there's some Excel involved, <laughs> uh, especially depending on how detailed you want to get with it. So um, this is good old Excel full of campaign statistics, and I know you're all very familiar and love this interface like I do. But luckily, Eric, your passion for Excel and for actually what you're calculating out, it actually makes it pretty easy to understand what it is that you're doing, and it gives a little more of an intuition behind how you're finding these numbers and how you're going to set your bids. So as many numbers as we see right there, as much as we're going to be hearing in the next couple of minutes, it actually is a really great tool, and I think that's actually when you sink into it, it's, uh, it's pretty useful. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing uh, we're going to do when it comes to this sort of mobile bid adjustment is we're going to create a pivot table. And I hear Sean, yes. I, I said that, and I heard Sean Quad like my squealing. <laughs> he has like a sixth sense when it comes to the pivot table. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is download that campaign report and then clean it up as you are kind of familiar with doing in the pivot tabling world. And then hit the data button, or however, this is on a Mac, so I'm, yeah, I know it's different on a Windows machine, but you'll want to create a pivot table for using all of that data. And then the thing you want to set up is create campaign, or put campaign into the row labels, and then put device into your column labels. And then you can select, so in this case, we're going to want to be comparing computers versus mobile devices with both browsers. So you can hit that um, drop down menu and then just select computers and mobile devices. And then in this case, since we're just going to be using some calculated fields, we're just going to be calculating the average cost per click to each of those campaigns. Um, I've never had much luck when it comes to using the average uh, cost per click statistics um, in the interface. And it, it doesn't play well with uh, the pivot table. So I just like to calculate it to make sure I have uh, the correct version. So in this case, it's just going to be average cost per click. And then make it be the formula is cost divided by clicks. So in this case, what we're going to be doing is just calculating the mobile bid modifier that makes it so your performance is going to be the same. So if you have mobile, um, you know, enabled in some of these other campaigns, um, you can make it so you're just keeping your performance consistent. Yeah, it's kind of like looking at your data and saying, okay, if I had. Uh, a mobile bid adjustment in place for the last 90 days, what would that number be to get the data that I'm looking at right now? Yeah, exactly. Now, this is a, a, in a case where you're already kind of running mobile but doing sort of separate bids. You can use a lot of VLOOKUP functions, but really the way you want to do it, um, at least in this sort of simple case, it, we'll just add sort of a calculation here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys to see. Is you're just going to be taking your mobile device uh, average cost per click, which in this case is C5, and then dividing it by the computer cost per click, which they is, is B5. So what that gives you is just sort of an 83%. So that means, whoop, there's a reason I have a mouse here and I was not using it. So 
this gives you now the sort of initial percentage of the mobile, so in this case, the mobile average cost per click is 84% of the computer cost per click. But that's not an option for us to use in the interface that doesn't work for us. So you have to change this formula a little bit. So right now it's the mobile cost per click, average cost per click divided by the computer cost per click, and then you want to subtract one to make it be in a format that you can use in the editor. So in this case, just add and subtract one. So in this case, we want to add a negative 16% modifier to like the Alabama campaign to get the mobile bid modifier that's going to make performance be uh, analogous to it. Um, and then to make it actually, to clean it up a little bit more, you're also going to want to just um, remove any of those percentage marks because um, as we saw in the editor, the interface doesn't take the percentage. Yep, I think that totally makes sense. That, uh, does it, does it really? Yeah. <laughs> I think so, Eric, but I've heard you, you know, reiterate this multiple times. It's really, really, really in my system. <laughs> uh, but I, I think that it does make sense and it kind of touches back on that um, consistency within how you set your adjustments and then how you upload them and making sure that they get interpreted correctly. Well, great. I'm glad it makes sense to somebody. How about you, Melissa? Does that make uh, a little bit of sense, at least in terms of how I'm explaining it? <laughs> Yeah, it makes lots of sense. I do have a question for you, though. So when you first upgrade the campaign and you change that mobile bid adjustment to 50, you would actually replace this mobile bid adjustment with the 50. So it would be 16%, not 50, right? Yeah, exactly. So okay. if you just want to do like the blanket adjustment down, like the 50 is kind of a good place to start. If you want to keep performance relative to like where it's been in the past, like over the past 90 days, this is the calculation that you put in place and then use that mobile bid adjustment. Now, this is kind of where you would start with the migration process. Now, when you see um, your statistics, like if you are also have like some conversion statistics that you need to take into account, you can then start doing a whole bunch of other crazy math where you take like the difference in the CPA and then apply that percentage difference to this percentage difference and then all the Excel calculations kind of make me go a little bit cross-eyed. <laughs> I don't think you're alone in that, Eric, but uh, we appreciate your enthusiasm. Yeah, so it's, it's, <laughs> so it's making them, it's modifying the modifier with another modifier through multiplication and um, I'm really glad that Google has made this such a simple system. <laughs> really, enhanced campaigns is a very, it's, it's made our world so much simpler. <laughs> but really, I'm sure that uh, the stock in Excel has gone through the roof. Now that we uh, see that this is a way that you can do it, and it actually keeps you from losing your mind. Yeah, yeah. At least for uh, at least for the time being, we'll see how it kind of evolves from here. Because we'll kind of show you a few other things that you'll have to do to kind of um, make this migration actually work. Uh, and it, it gets a little bit less, or a little bit more complicated, I should say. But um, when it comes to the ad group level bit adjustments, it's the same process of taking um, that device segmented report just from the ad group tab and then doing the same calculation there. But you're going to want to make sure that the calculations have enough data because otherwise you're just going to wind up with a lot of ad groups with no, uh, with, or at least not enough data to make sort of that correct call because otherwise you wind up with. Uh, I, I had one account that had, before I came across this kind of method and keeping this in mind, had a 595,000% increase, my, or it should have had, or at least that's what the data told me. So <laughs> don't do that. Uh, so it's maybe good to take a step back. Yeah, just, just evaluate. Just assume your calculations yeah. are going to be uh, infallible. And honestly, like, I would be sure to cap your bid adjustments at some point. Like, I would never want to do... I mean, you can go all the way up to 300%. I would not recommend doing that. Do you have Do you have any accounts that have any sort of adjustment that high? Uh, I'd have some that go about as high as 100%, but my comfort level when you get to like making the bubble bid be more than twice what you set your desktop bids, that that's when things start getting a little bit uh, hairy for me, like uncomfortable. So I would kind of cap things at 100%. And that's really for any bid adjustment, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, that makes sense that the the further your pendulum is swinging, the more you have to, uh, to gamble. So sounds like you're keeping it pretty safe. Mm -hmm. But once you've upgraded all of these campaigns that we have listed here into enhanced campaigns, um, this is pretty much ready to just upload. So all you do is just copy and paste the mobile bid adjustment 
um, and make it just values and then remove the percentage marks and just make it so you have only these two spots, so no decimals. Um, just make it be these whole numbers um, without any percentages and then like, if it's you're adjusting it downward by 16%, make sure it's just minus 16. So that's the formatting you have to use and then just um, make sure it says campaign and then mobile bid adjustment and then as we've kind of formatted it here. Uh, and then obviously you'll also want to get rid of the divide by zero errors. In this case, uh, without the data there, you'll probably just want to have it be like minus 100% or kind of go with our flat minus 50%. Yeah. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think it makes sense. Melissa, how's that sound to you? Sounds great. All right. So that's kind of the more complicated stuff uh, in terms of the bid modifiers. Um, and you can get super complicated with this, like I said, adding multipliers on top of your modifiers and kind of making yourself go crazy in that, in that respect. So um, we'll kind of move on from there because otherwise we could probably spend an entire like, <laughs> webinar just on how to calculate this stuff. So moving forward, some of the things that we'd like to talk about that are actually really nice for um, enhanced campaigns are site links. So mm -hmm. Carrie? Yeah, so with site links, uh, we've really gotten to see that, that Google understands that we just want more information. We want whatever they can tell us as often as they can tell us. And with site links, they've done that in a couple ways. One, they've provided us with the opportunity to really specify what site links we want to have for each of our ad groups. So like we talked about with different kinds of segmentation, things like that, we want to be able to identify what's going to be the best site link to attach to each of those. And then when you pull up the data for those, they actually will go through and show you the success of those site links. And instead of just being a blanket, site links were part of the ad and the ad got the click, you can actually see what people responded to. Yeah, and having those statistics on the individual site link level can really help you optimize them. Like mm -hmm. I've had a few accounts where I've done, um, like the upgrade on, used these um, site link specific statistics to realize that, okay, we get some clicks on this particular site link or when this particular site link shows, but they don't convert very well. Mm -hmm. So you can get rid of those site links that don't perform. Yeah. Yep. And one other thing that I want to show you guys that you may not have um, been able to see in this, this upgrade process um, and have not been able to kind of explore, there's a really great tool to use in the segment uh, drop-down menu, and that's this extension versus other. So what this does is that it actually gives you the raw performance statistics of that site link mm -hmm. versus um, the rest of the ad. So it can give you an idea of whether or not that particular site link actually drives traffic or if it's just the real estate on the search engine results page that helps improve your results. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that we've all been kind of wondering about for a while, like really being able to compare what it is that's affecting your ad performance. So being able to pull up that, that it sort of feels like a little like competitive kid saying like, is it this, is it this the winner or is it something else that's actually um, it's having that effect? So being able to pull up that kind of data I think is giving us tons of insight in, as to what is really yeah. pushing that traffic and pushing those conversions. So I know for this account, um, Melissa doesn't have any site links enabled just yet. I know um, we've talked to her about it in the past. She has some that she'd like to enable. Um, we don't have access to those URLs, so I don't want to uh, actually do anything here that we're not uh, familiar with. So um, we do just want to point out, though, that you have the option of doing campaign level and ad group level mm -hmm. site link extension which are super helpful um, in sort of like a case study of why you'd use an ad group level site extension. Um, in this case, um, one of our other account managers here, Sam Owen, works on an account with um, uh, some branded campaigns that make use of sort of product segmentation within those campaigns. Now, prior to this, he would have had to segment out those campaigns and make uh, like a branded this product campaign or branded this kind of product campaign and have site like extensions kind of tailored to those campaigns specifically. Now, this actually does simplify the process a little bit. You can do mm -hmm. ad group level Slotnik extensions and not kind of balloon the amount of campaigns that we work with. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And Melissa, taking a look at your website, I mean, there are so many opportunities for site links that you could actually use that that would be a really good opportunity for you to kind of mix and match what you use depending on the way that you've got your ad groups grouped out. So depending on what kind of traffic you're bringing in, what kind of keywords you've got assigned to those, those site links are really going to be a huge opportunity to say these are the links that I think are going to appeal to these users and uh, see what kind of data you get from that. Definitely. I'm excited to actually put some site links on the ad group level instead of just the campaign level. I think that's a really cool feature. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of the ones that we've been kind of requesting for a while. I mean, more detail from site link statistics and the ad group level option has been um, 
it's probably like the best point that's come across mm -hmm. from the enhanced campaigns transition. And I, and I know there's been a lot of kind of uproar over the uh, the mobile bit adjustment stuff, but we can at least kind of hang our hat on this one positive feature. So um, yeah, absolutely make use of those as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of like the push pull balance that we've been getting with the enhanced campaigns of wanting more control, feeling like there are things where we have less control over. Yeah. This is something that people have been asking for for a long time. So being able to get access to this, being able to run our tests or structure our accounts in a way that takes advantage of those, I think is a, a huge step for us as far as enhanced campaigns go. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of other things that are also really nice, um, the call extensions have been a really nice thing to kind of experiment with. So you have upgraded new and improved call extensions. So um, Carrie, I know you've done a little bit of work with that and a little bit of research into what that entails. So what are the yeah. benefits of uh, transitioning to new these new uh, call extensions? Well, I can tell you that I've got a client who relies heavily on calls, and so that was one of the first things that we talked about when enhanced campaign campaigns came along, is that there's no longer going to be that additional fee associated with people calling through your ad. So now with enhanced campaigns, when you have either a Google forwarding number or your own business number and somebody clicks through your ad on your phone number and connects, you actually just pay for the cost of that of the click of that ad. Yeah. So that's something that, as far as figuring out what's you, how to use your budget and where you can sort of afford to experiment, especially if you haven't done a lot of mobile traffic in the past, that's sort of a fear that you can take off the plate is that it's just going to be like a click, but it's actually going to be connecting with you uh, on the phone. So as far as call extensions go, that's a huge, uh, a huge leg up. There's the uh, the added detail of when you're in, uh, migrating your campaigns to enhance that you can no longer have phone numbers in your ad text. So that's something that a lot of people take advantage of is being able to include that in their ad copy. That's something that you're going to have to take away because yeah. it's no longer allowed. But with these call extensions being free click to call, that's actually sort of yeah. not only leveling the playing field, but actually improving it because now your ad copy has your phone number and a whole 70 characters worth of ad right. space. And I know in the past, um, one of the things that they did end up doing is charging you for people who actually just call the forwarding number, like who actually manually entered it in um, based on the results page, like they saw the number and um, entered it in, didn't click on anything, like you still got charged for that. Now they, they don't do that. So that's right, one of the right. good reasons to upgrade. Yeah. So it's basically, it's kind of just a win-win a scenario where you don't, you just get your phone number out there um, and you don't pay for it if somebody doesn't click on it. Yeah, and with the Google forwarding numbers, if that's what you're using for bringing in your traffic, the tracking that they've got behind that is really fantastic. You're able to identify what you consider a conversion based on things like how long you're on the phone, uh, stuff like that that really helps you optimize your account, especially as you're if you are transitioning into mobile where you haven't used it before. That's a really good way to to pull in data and really identify what kind of traffic you've been missing out on. So. Yeah, so you have a whole lot of options here in the adding call extensions. Um, one of the ones that we actually have made a lot of use with, and again, we don't want to do anything uh, too disruptive to. Uh, uh, Melissa's account, we want to make sure that she gets uh, as much control as possible. One of the things that you do uh, want to make use of, though, um, depending on your business needs, are the ad scheduling options. So you're not going to necessarily be open 24 hours a day for phone calls, so you do have the option to either switch your phone numbers to go to like maybe a call center or maybe to a voicemail box, mm -hmm. uh, or you know just get out of those hours entirely in which you don't operate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing that especially being able to set it on such a um, Defined level, like the ad group level, being able to say these are what I want to be showing, this is exactly when that can really help uh, make the most efficient use of your budget and also uh, really find out where your conversions are coming in, when they're coming in, and, and pushing for those too. Yeah, absolutely. So, in terms of uh, your own business hours, Melissa, I know we've talked about this a little bit in the past. So, when are your hours of operation in terms of being able to accept phone calls? From 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 8 p.m. Okay, so you want to be, yeah, so an 8 to 8 schedule, um, is that all seven days of the week or is it only for um, just business, uh, like Monday through Friday? It's just Monday through Friday. Okay, yeah, so that's the kind of ad scheduling you want to take into account for when you do these call extensions, because otherwise, um, I mean, you can get back to voicemails, but it, you know, you're not necessarily going to be able to make as good use of those as you would be otherwise. Yeah, or if, or if you have a setup where you have a specific number you'd like them to call during the off hours. Yeah versus while you're open and you want to be the one talking to them, you can have that directed to a different number and just set those uh, those different call extensions for those varying time periods. All and right. this is something that I can do on the ad the ad group level too, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and very cool. Yeah, scheduling and everything at that level. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is um, one of the more, I guess, complex things. So 
Um, we're going to talk about the location modifiers, like location bid modifiers. So that's one of the big things that also was introduced. You have the opportunity to modify your bids based on location performance. So it's the same sort of method that we do with mobile bid adjustments. It's just way more complex because Google did something kind of uh, a little crazy with it. So I'll show you what I mean. So you can go to the settings tab and go to locations and you get all these different um, targeting options. So you'll notice um, that these statistics are missing something very important. Oh, they're missing one of the most important things. And you can't add it in. So what Carrie's talking about is you can't customize these columns to show you your conversion data. So either many per click or one per click, you have no idea how these bid adjustments have impacted performance on so, this page. Yeah. So boys and girls, what Eric's saying is please, please make it known that you would love to get your conversion uh, conversion volume, conversion rates available through these settings. That's going to just change everything, being able to pull that in. And when we're not able to see it in the setting, Mr. Eric Couch has a great idea of how to uh, sort of pull that and smash it together so you can get some insights. Yeah, so um, you have the option to modify your bid adjustments here in the location settings tab. So basically what you need to do and what I can show you is a little bit of the, just some of the device stuff as well, but I'll, we don't have any location bid adjustments set up just yet here. Um, but I'll show you what I mean when I mentioned before that the bid adjustment does not show up in the same format um, in, this in this page versus what you would see uh, in entering it in, in the editor or in right here. So I'll download this just to show you real quick. This is another campaign device report. Um, so to show you, so the bid adjustment here, Carrie, what are you noticing here is the difference? So it's listed as zero, so that's just a, that's, so these, so first, first and foremost, mm -hmm. the platforms, um, so 30,000, so three followed by those four zeros, that means desktops, uh, 3002, um, that means tablets, so 3001 is where you would change your mobile adjustment. Mm -hmm. So this is the Florida campaign that we migrated via the editor, that has a 0.5, so in this case, um, yeah, it's not that same kind of format that we entered it in. So to actually make those adjustments, you'd have to do like multiply it by 100, and then we have to subtract one and then multiply it by 100. So it gets, there's a lot of dumb math. I was going to say, it's messy. We haven't even started it. Yeah. So. so that's the kind of issue that we ran into with kind of adjusting our own mobile bid modifiers um, and our location bid modifiers because it does the same thing. And that's an issue because in order to kind of correlate these things, what you need to do is that you'd have to download um, your location bit adjustments and then also go to the dimensions tab and then start using the lookup functions to get your conversion data. The lookup functions, that sounds awesome, Eric. Yeah, it's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, it actually is really fun. I don't know why I sounded sarcastic there. Because because it is really fun. And I think that maybe it just hasn't caught on yet. I think it's going to be the next the next newest thing. Yeah. But what you want to do is just go to the dimensions tab and download your geographic information and make sure your columns also contain your conversion data and then download that and then V look up your country, territory, and region and then correlate that with your locations and then kind of adjust things according to there. But this is where you'd start doing like the bid adjustments on a location level. So some of you can make a lot of great use out of this. I know you have some highly geo-targeted campaigns mm -hmm. that have used some mobile bid adjustments or some location adjustments mm -hmm. to pretty good effect. Yeah, and I think that, that the conversion data specifically is uh, going to be one of the things that you really want to keep an eye on because you're going to be able to see the activity as far as impressions go, your clicks, uh, and that sort of thing. But really, you're not going to be able to see the conversions at the end of the tunnel, which is going to um, sort of uh, it's going to require that you have sort of a, a, a adjustable hand as far as your bid adjustments go. So when you're pulling all of your data, especially if it's at the level of, of uh, zip code, which is an option through your settings, uh, that's going to be something that you're not going to be able to get as fine a point on as far as how it's working. Yeah. And I know in um, Melissa, the way you have your kind of campaign set up and the way you add in these different um, location targets, um, there may not be as much value in like emphasizing one over another. So um, it may not be something you can make use of in your particular business, but it is something to kind of keep in mind uh, for some of our other listeners out there to make use of in your own campaigns. You know, if you have some really great areas that you want to emphasize your presence in mm -hmm. and maybe get some more conversions, leads, sales, or however you kind of need this to suit your business, uh, this would be a great way to go about that. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. And if you find that there's a yeah particular area that has more value to you on sort of the the back end revenue side of things, then that's kind of where you can experiment a little with this and just you know give yeah. it a little nudge with those adjustments. Yeah. So there is one other thing. Well, a couple other things we need to discuss. Just kind of real quick, we're going to gloss over them because we're almost out of time. Um, one is kind of answering the question about what to do when you have like mobile specific landing pages versus just desktop landing pages. Mm -hmm. So if you have a mobile specific landing page, so what's the process that you do there? Um, so you can either, like we said, go through the Upgrade Center and do the actual merge where they will accommodate that. They'll look at it and say, okay, these are going to be mobile preferred ads. Right. Go ahead and set those up that way. Um, or what you can do is sort of go through that manually and merge it yourself, where through the editor, for example, you can upload those, and as you're doing that, mark those as being your mobile preferred ads, which at that point, it will constantly be flagging those so that when users come through, it'll distribute them to uh, the proper person with the proper device. Yeah, it seems way <laughs> so much more simpler now in the hands <laughs> campaigns. Again, that's kind of a running theme where they've tried to introduce some simplification to the process, but for a lot of us, they've really just introduced a lot more complexity that made things a bit more difficult. Um, but I know in your case, Melissa, you have kind of um, a mobile page. Well, your mobile devices go to the desktop page, but it's been kind of optimized well enough that it's not a terrible experience. So, um, yeah, if you can, I think we one of the recommendations that we've talked about in the past is that if you can do some mobile optimizations to your page, just make it a little bit more mobile friendly, or maybe make it responsive design, um, which is a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of investment. Um, again, that kind of simplification issue, and I say simplification with quotation marks around it. <laughs> um, that's one of those things that you're just going to want to kind of um, keep in mind, maybe a project you want to start considering. Mm -hmm. Um, and then outside of that, it's just if you are merging campaigns, this is kind of a simple thing to keep in mind. If you merge those campaigns, make sure you also merge their budgets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what, what you're really doing, whether you're excited about it or a little more reserved about it, you're inviting in uh, additional forms of traffic. So you really want to be able to accommodate that with your budget so that it, it turns out there is a lot of, of volume, converge volume coming in through mobile devices that you haven't appealed to in the past. You'll be able to accommodate that and not miss out on it. And one thing I will just kind of offer as sort of an anecdotal piece of advice is that when you do this kind of merge and this, um, yeah, it's very difficult to control the allotment of budget towards like desktop versus mobile traffic because you're suddenly throwing everything all back together in kind of one big pot and you need to be very kind of mindful of how that traffic is broken down, you know, with your mobile bid adjustments and um, kind of merging those budgets because even if you have your budget set up in such a way that Say you have like $100 allocated towards desktop and then 50 towards mobile. When you make that sort of a communal $150 budget for both desktop and mobile, you're not going to get that same breakdown in terms of traffic as you did before. And that's, yeah, absolutely. that stinks. And that's one of those things where when you do convert it to or migrate it to enhanced campaigns, you do want to look into it and sort of segment by, by device and see what's happening and see if your mobile is taking over. If, you know, or if it's limited by budget. Or, or yeah. if it's limited by budget, absolutely. If it's, if it's doing something that needs response from you. Absolutely. So those are some of the pitfalls and uh, tips that we've kind of worked our way through as we've kind of been early adopters of the enhanced campaign stuff. Um, and as I mentioned earlier on in today's webinar, if you want some more information about what we've kind of experienced, what we've seen in terms of our statistics, um, Jeff Allen wrote a fantastic article about it, so I recommend everybody read it, really. Um, it's pretty much required reading for us in terms of our enhanced <laughs> campaigns experiences so far, and I recommend you guys all do the same. Absolutely. It's months and months of us going through this and, and learning as we go and, and really figuring out what those best practices are going to be for this new setup. So it's yeah. certainly worth a, a look. Yeah, so Melissa, I hope we were able to kind of answer some of your kind of outstanding concerns with the enhanced campaigns migration process and some of the things to look out for and maybe take advantage of as you do this migration, uh, more of this migration on your own. Um, were there any other outstanding questions you kind of had for us before we uh, kind of take off for today? No, I don't think so. I took about four pages of notes, and since this webinar is being recorded, I'll be able to rewatch it a couple times. So I think yeah. it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And this will be made available on PPC Hero in uh, it'll be a couple of days. I think we'll, we usually put it up in the next week. I think Monday or Tuesday. So. All right, so we're going to finally move out of the the wild the wild west version of uh, the <laughs> webinar world and go back into PowerPoint. 
um, just kind of uh, wrap things up for you. So we have a short poll, so it's just asking if you need some help with your PPC accounts and management. So we have a few options listed below. You can just answer uh, at your leisure and kind of give us an idea. Um, I will say, since, we, since we've been doing a lot of talk about enhanced campaigns today, um, I guess we, we could kind of consider ourselves subject matter experts there. So that's <laughs> one of the things we, we'd help with. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. And then if you have any more questions, um, yeah, just be sure to fire those off to us with the Think PPC hashtag. So we wanted to thank you guys for attending our live Enhanced Campaigns Migration today. Um, so yeah, thank you to everybody who attended. And special thanks to Melissa from...